So in the past 24 hours, one of my better sources sent me confirmation that he had his hands on a Matisse 2 product, uh, specifically an R5 3600 XT. And today I want to tell you a few things, the performance you can expect from this series coming out one week from now, and my thoughts, further thoughts, updated thoughts on why AMD is releasing this refresh. And I have updated thoughts because indeed, it's not that exciting. Do not expect this video to have any major bombshells. Uh, in fact, normally I wouldn't even do a video about something this small as I just stated before in my Zen and the Art of Microarchitecture Maintenance where I said that I almost didn't even release my Matisse 2 info after sitting on it for weeks because even back then it sounded boring to me. But nonetheless, let us get into it. Anyone following the 3000 XT leaks closely lately would have seen that several sources seem to confirm that for the most part the 3000 XT series will be around 4% or a little higher better than the 3000X non-T versions that released last year. And yeah. I am here to tell you that those leaks are 100% down, as far as I can tell. According to my source, the 3600 XT boosts about 100 megahertz faster than the 3600 X, and this is all well using, at the very least, about the same amount of energy as the non-XT version that came out last year. And from what I'm told, we shouldn't expect anything much better from the rest of the lineup, with the exception of the 3800X that might be 5 to 8% better. So that one, that one might actually be enough better to match almost all of Comet Lake and gaming. And, and again, this is something that has been shown before in other leaks out there right now, that the 3800 XT indeed is slightly more aggressive in its performance uplift versus the X version it's replacing. And in fact, if you look at the picture of the 3600 XT I was sent, it confirms the same based in boost clocks of that video cards leak from a while ago. And so there it is. Because that's the same, I think we can assume the rest of this chart is exactly the same. And if you look at the 3800 XT, indeed, that is the one with the highest clock speed increase out of the bunch. And so what do I think about this? Well, first of all, let's just talk about price performance, okay? Um, the one wild card before I get started on that that we should remember is FCLK clock. As I've covered in my hardware numbers broken silicon episode, if we could get the FCLK clock to above 2 gigahertz, which right now it's basically a 1900 megahertz wall when you do fabric overclocking with Zen 2 processors, if we could get above 2 gigahertz, no, I do think these could be a solid 10% faster um, after all tweaking is said and done, overclock to overclock versus the X series um, it's being placed above. But I don't expect that. Uh, if I receive information, which I could, this should be tested this week, probably before the reviews, and I should receive an update, I will pin that message in this video, and I'll let you guys know on Broken Silicon or Twitter or something. But, but I don't really expect that. So I really do just expect this series to be between 4 and 8% better with it closer to the lower end of that. And as such, yeah, I don't think anyone should really buy this. I mean, look, I know there are rumors of Horizon Zero Dawn and Assassin's Creed Valhalla bundles coming out soon, but those should be bundled with the non-XT versions. And so assuming those games bundles apply to the non-XT versions... I don't even think there's really an argument to say, oh, I'm paying $500 for the 3900 XT because it comes with a game or two I want. That should also come with the 3900X. Basically, with the 3900X being around $400 consistently right now, I see no reason to get the XT version for an extra 100 bucks. And the same goes for the rest of the lineup. Again, unless it turns out there's some crazy FCLK overclocking and I don't know, the, the 30... 800 XT can perform 10% better. But honestly, even then, the price performance wouldn't justify it. This XT release is to get prices up before Zen 3 comes out. I really do think that's what's going on. But that's not the only thing that I think's going on. I think AMD's actually come to a business realization that they should have come to a long time ago. And, and I want to remind you guys of the R7 2800X. Remember it? 
Well, you shouldn't because it never came out. Remember, in early 2018, the R72700X launched at a price of $329. And then five months later, the more powerful 9900K launched for, well, in my opinion, double the overall price when you take into account the more powerful cooling required. Right, so the 2700X comes out early 2018. Uh, say late mid end of summer 2018 the 9900k comes out and then everyone was like wait there was an 1800x before where is the 2800x and in fact jim anderson gm and senior vp of computing and graphics at amd of the time basically said they would release it if it made sense but the fact is, back then, doing a slight refresh really didn't make sense. Coffee Lake was a solid 10 to 20% better than Zen Plus at gaming. And that's very different from Comet Lake's 5 to 10% versus Zen 2. Additionally, the refresh would have come about six months after the release of the 2700X. Yeah, that's time to get better yields, but not significantly better yields. Basically, I think a hypothetical 2800X would have been 5% better than the 2700X, but it would have also probably been 125 watts. It would have probably been pretty close to 9900K power usage when the 9900K isn't overly boosting and it still would have lost by a solid 10 percent. so what amd releases this 2800x and everyone says yep it's faster than the 2700x and it's still notably weaker than the 9900k and then what does amd price it at 400 dollars? no one would get that over the 2700x but this time it's different it's been a year since the launch of zen 2 amd is going to release a refresh that according to what i'm told uses the exact same energy as before while bringing a nice four to eight percent performance increase and with that in mind it is easy and it will look much better to compare it to comet lake which actually gets me to my main point I believe it's not just because it's easy. A major reason AMD wants to release this 3000 XT series, even though it's just, I don't know, three to four months before the release of Zen 3, is because it will be good advertising. Like I said, if you would have compared a 2800X to Coffee Lake, it wouldn't have looked that impressive because it wouldn't have won at really anything, probably. This time, though, releasing. Some new series, even if it's only slightly better, is going to make everyone like Hardware Unboxed, Gamers Nexus, Tom's Hardware go back and re-review with the latest BIOS drivers compared to Comet Lake. This is a PSA announcement, in my opinion. AMD's having everyone review these slightly better products so that right after Comet Lake's out, right after Comet Lake has decent availability on Newegg, all of these Matisse 2 reviews come out as a reminder, hey, remember... Ours costs a lot less than theirs, and it uses a lot less energy, and it comes with games. Don't buy Comet Lake. They know in the reviews, reviewers will say, I mean, this is more efficient. This is slightly slower at gaming, but don't get this. Get the 3900X non-XT. It's so reviewers remind everyone to just buy Zen 2. Whether XT or not, they don't care. They just want this massive wave of PSA announcements from every tech site reminding people Comet Lake isn't that impressive. And so, yeah, that's what I think the 3000 XT series is all about. It's not that exciting, but hopefully you'll find this ad exciting. It's safe to say I'm not a morning person. Most days, I try to sleep in as much as possible. Still, sometimes I just need to get up early, whether for a conference call or just simply to get a video done on time. When I do this, great coffee definitely helps, especially when it doesn't skimp on the caffeine and it actually is priced reasonably like it is at the henma.com where you can choose between delicious flavors like highlander grog and chocolate raspberry and you know what unlike most artisanal coffee i've tried it actually wakes you up and it tastes great the h-e-n-d-m-a dot com use offer code moore's law that's m-o-o-r-e-s-l-a-w to get 10 percent off right now your coffee orders and do make sure you use these guys if you need coffee because coffee is their passion and right now this is a side hustle they're trying to grow into a bigger business out of norman oklahoma they could use your help if you could use a good cup of coffee 
Well, hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you check out my sponsor. They really have been good to me so far. And I hope you subscribe to this channel, ring the bell button, and share this video. And if you do have the extra money, consider supporting me on Patreon, where you get podcasts early and ad-free, in addition to exclusive podcasts every week. All right. Thank you for watching. <laughs>